why did you choose to pursue theater? Uh, I would have to say I've been doing acting since um, uh, I've been involved in theater since my junior in high school. I decided to pursue theater when I was really young. Um, my parents forced me into a lot of sports and for those who know me they know that I am not athletic in any means of the word and um, finally they said I give up you do what you want to do but it all really started when me and my friends we did we used to do YouTube videos just for fun on my YouTube channel that is no longer active actually but we used to just joke around and make fun videos and it was all good it's uh, it's funny actually I tell everybody, I put in, in all my bios, uh, Jazz's first acting role was at the age of 13. Knowing this was his calling, his mother made him audition, and that's when he knew he'd want to do this for the rest of his life. started my dad, actually. He was in a small group, and he acted in high school, and he's a much better actor than me. But I started uh, with him. I took a small role in one of their plays, and Lo and behold, I, I liked it. How long have you been in theater? They trying to find out how old I am. Not at all. <laughs> I've been in, well, I've been in theater since first grade. Uh, but I got my uh, degree in 19... Oh, well, picture it, Sicily, 1932. A young boy is in church and his church organizers decide to ask him to do a play because they think he would be a good actor. Well, it, it goes back to when I was a, uh, a kid uh, and I used to play in, in the backyard with my neighbors. How does uh, one transition from acting okay. to costuming? Well, one would take quite a few years off yeah. their acting career right. and <laughs> like, um, think all all hard college. about <laughs> what their intentions were for the theater and <laughs> decide maybe they were better, they were more talented in other areas. When I paint, I take inspiration from how people act, how their emotions work, how their minds work, how my mind works. And so I take that and I channel that into an energy that is more straightforward than acting is. What caused you to decide to start directing? One word, control. I have decided to change my major for the seventh time. Um, I want to be a child psychologist, and I think theater is one way that I'll be able to help children. Um, I can recommend it to kids who aren't really sure of themselves or who they want to be. Um, also, I think it's great for speech therapy because you have to enunciate and project your voice. I was on a uh, reality TV show called uh, Looking for Stars and uh, I finished fourth out of 75. <laughs> and uh, I uh, got a ham sandwich for that. Been doing a couple of high school plays, did a few uh, a few at Jefferson College. Um, then I've been acting with the Onward Community Theater for a couple of years, and now I've moved out to working in some of the areas. Just recently finished up doing Christmas traditions in St. Charles, the coolest experience an actor can ever ha have. And during last summer, I joined up with a uh, cast, and then there were none. That was definitely so far my favorite production. Um, well, right now, any number can die. That actually might even be better. We'll see. And then there were none. And then it wasn't any. Yeah, and then it wasn't any. Um, which is the politically correct name of the Agatha, Agatha, Agatha the politically correct name of the Agatha Christie play, Ten Little Indians. Now it's Captain Philip Lombard in that, and that show is the one show that I've done where I became the most like a family with any cast I've ever been a part of. And I loved the Kirkwood Ice Rink, and I found out that they were doing Aladdin. So I walked over there and I got a brochure, and I told my mom about it, and she let me audition. And I made it as a townsperson at first, 
and I made a lot of friends and I really enjoyed it. And I actually ended up being the fat lady from the opening scene. I got into acting as I always wanted to entertain people, always wanted to make people feel an emotion, something that makes them, you know, feel happy, feel good about themselves, makes them, you know, just feel. And mostly this goes back to when I was a kid and I saw the Music Man movie with Robert Preston. It's hearing the music scene, the, the cool, how amazing it was and how happy it made me, I just want people to feel that. Uh, I got to be a character on stage. I got to be imaginative in that character. I got to become part of an imaginary world. And I got to help other members of the audience uh, uh, become part of that world. And so uh, I thought this was great, this was exhilarating, and it's been in my blood ever since. But I, I just love acting. It's, you know, my dream to grow up and be an actor, maybe go to Hollywood, something like that, I don't know. Um, and I've just loved it my whole life. When I was a kid, I would watch movies, and um, certain movies, I like learn the dialogue to it and say it back, you know, while it's going on. And it was, it'd be all just good fun. So acting's been my life for a very, very long time. I think I like theater because it's a way of expressing myself, but also kind of understanding myself in a way by being somebody else. Uh, yeah, I started doing plays in high school because I was going through some really dark stuff. And I had a strong desire to not be myself anymore. So I was like, I'm gonna do plays because I can be somebody else for a while. She'll tell you straight up, flat out, I fought her kicking and screaming to go in that car ride going there. Jazz, let's go, let's go to this read through. Mom, do I really have to go? She, she, she'll tell you that she'll act it out just like I'm doing, better than me, winning Tony off of it. In my first year, first semester, my good friend Sabrina, who was a drama major, theater arts major, asked me, would I operate a spotlight? And she was my best good buddy, so I said, sure. And then the next thing out of my mouth was, what's a spotlight? You said you're in musicals, can you sing? No, no, I can't sing. Um, they mainly put me as like a chorus member, um, like in the background, but it was still fun to do because I was with everybody and on stage and everything, but no, no, I, they wouldn't like give me like a solo song or anything, I'm terrible. You wanna sing on camera real quick? No. <laughs> oh, no. No. Oh my god, you're trying to get me without a vocal warm up or nothing. Oh my goodness. I try to sneak that one in there for y'all. Oh, I know I saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, what was the premise of the show? Huh? What was the premise of the show? It was uh, <laughs> back in the days of uh, in the early days of American Idol type shows and the Stars Network was trying to come up with something like it. I think people um, who are theater people and fashion and in the creative industry just love the process of yeah. um, like this idea in your head and it's just a dream and then like seeing it come to life mm -hmm. and like this crazy kind of makeover thing where it's just yeah how you envisioned it, there's something like really, really exciting about that at the end. And they say that acting bug because you get bit by it and you don't want to quit. I have one more question. Do you think that your love of books influences your acting or directing style in any way? Good question. An emphatic yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, first off, plays are, are books mm -hmm. first. They're a script, right? And if you don't love to read, uh, uh, it's very difficult to get into uh, the mechanics of a play, because that's what they are. They are books brought to life. What got you into teaching theater now? I needed money. Acting was something that it, it changed from being the me not wanting to be myself to me being myself, but still being this character. And it kind of helped hone my individuality more. And then it just like changed into this whole, well, this is transporting me to another space, another headspace, and making me feel better. I want to do that for other people. And uh, I've said that if, if anything, if I can get to a point where I can live off of acting, if I can live off of acting, 
even if I'm making considerably less money, but I can eat and have a roof over my head, but I'm doing nothing but acting, I'm fine with that. I actually got stuck in a trash can on stage in front of the entire high school. But I think the best part was it wasn't a lead role. It wasn't even something that was written in for me. I had to do it all myself. It was all improv. And I had the most fun, and I didn't even have any speaking lines. I was a poli-sci, political science major. I was going to be a lawyer, and I was going to um, continue the dream or make Papa's dream a reality, your grandfather's dream a reality, of a law firm called Clark, Clark, and Clark. <clears throat> you didn't know that, did you? Um, I have to say, like, I think if there's at least one moment during every show when I'm like off stage watching the mm -hmm. production and the audience and everybody's really enjoying it that I just, I'm so proud of everyone's hard work. Like, it's really great to see the costumes that we did mm -hmm. on stage looking wonderful, but yeah. Watching everyone act on stage is just it's really team awesome. Atmosphere. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Everything came together after a rough tech week. Everything like comes together. Yeah. A really awesome show. I knew that I would want to do it for the rest of my life after the Emmett Till play wrapped. And I remember being in my room at the age of 13, nobody else around, thinking about all the fun I had in the rehearsal process. Um, doing the actual show, I'd never done anything like that before, at school or anything like that, and I remember just crying. I just cried. Ending thoughts. I was sitting on the bus the other day, riding to God knows where, and I kind of thought of a quote. I don't know why I was thinking this, but I just kind of like, it like popped in my head. It's, don't live your life in a box for you won't realize how small it is until you're buried in it. Don't, if you even have the slightest like sensation of wanting to do something different, do it. Don't hold yourself back, don't limit yourself. Don't say that you can't do anything because you can't. And if you do it and you fail, hell, you tried. Like, it's like Jack Skellington says, for a moment why not even touch the sky? Like. Just do it. I guess if I had to make a living doing one and it paid, I would be on the stage or uh, in front of the camera. Couldn't pick one out of those two? Out of the two? Just out of curiosity. Probably stage because every night stage is different. That people like know how important clothing is to kind of portray yourself and um, show like who you are with your sense of fashion. With whatever decade it is, um, or if you're styling someone on stage, it's um, just important to like understand their character and try to um, let it show through their clothes, and it's really fun to like find their character and yeah. help them. Sometimes it's just um, like an accessory, like a pair of glasses or gloves that a, um, that a, you know, a person really like, you know, kind of, it makes their character kind of come to life when they put it on or like their bow tie and they're like, oh now I can yeah. really get into this character. Yeah. It's all about personality. Anything Morgan? Um, I guess from a costumer perspective, I always love when the actor like knows what size shoe they wear and knows what yeah. size dress they wear and knows <laughs> True. what's like. yeah. It's good to know those, that information anyway. New actors. Day -day -day -day. Know your specs. <laughs> Acting, even if it's something so sorrowful and disheartening on that stage, it at least takes that person away from the, the real world for a second. And they can go and they can live vicariously through these characters and look at this story and see, you know, what's happening with these people just for a little bit to get away from stuff. You know, if anything, you feel human. Right, right now, my two simplest goals for acting rise is to one day be on the Muni stage here in St. Louis, and to one day play Max Bialystok in a production of Mel Brooks' The Producers, because really, in the acting world, why try to shoot big and, and let yourself down while just playing simple and just take it one step at a time. That's my simplest part, and with of those two goals, it just seems a lot easier than just saying, well, one day I'm going to be an Oscar, winning an Oscar. Um.
Um, I have to say that be cautious when you join theater because you're going to make a lot of friends and maybe a couple enemies. Um, <laughs> um, lots of people think that the whole part of theater is being the star and being the lead role. But now that I'm a sophomore, well, I, should, I will be a junior in college, um, I realized that without a background cast, without those important people that have maybe two or three lines or absolutely nothing, or the technicians, or the costuming people, or the director, there wouldn't be a show. It would just be a one-man show, and not many people like going to see those, no do they? <laughs> um, I think theater, theater is life. Theater is happiness, and theater is special, and it will always be. We're rare and beautiful, like a unicorn.